Hi everyone! I'm young adult author Mary Gray of MaryGrayBooks.com and I'm here today with Vanessa K. Eccles, author of the best-selling novel Fabled. Her middle grade, Red Ribbons, is set to release this May and she is the executive editor of Bella Rave Literary Journal as well as her newest venture, The Faithful Creative Magazine. Vanessa's recently rejoined the indie author ranks after working as a literary agent where she previously represented me. And I just have to say that Vanessa is one of the kindest, most talented, and industry savvy people I know. So I feel so blessed to know her and grow together in our paths with indie publishing. And we both share this vision of creating more faith-based messages in secular stories. So Vanessa, how are you today? I am wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate this opportunity to just to get to share uh, our vision and Faithful Creative and also how wonderful and inspiring it is to be a part of the indie movement. Oh, me too. Well, thanks so much for agreeing to it. It means a lot. Wow. So um, I gave a little bit of background about you and your writing, and I was wondering if you would like to share a little bit more about yourself. Sure. Okay, so um, I've actually been pursuing writing seriously since 2009 when I finished my first book. Um, it was a crazy experience because I remember after finishing it, I did all this research, how do you query, you know, how do I get started, what, what kind of steps do I need to take to get published, and it did not take me long to realize I was way over my head. <laughs> I mean, I had not done any research prior to writing the book. I just thought, I write the book. It's, you know, it's an easy process. It's so far from the truth. It's, it's amazing. Um, but after kind of reading more about the process and what it really means to be a professional writer, I decided that the best thing for me to do was to go back to school and study literature, really see what what is really good writing and how can I make myself a writer um, the best that I can by studying other writers. And so I did that and that was probably, that's probably where I learned the most about being a writer and what it means to um, write well than probably anything else. Um, and at the end of that, I started interning for a Southern magazine. Um, their literature department needed an editor and they also needed someone to help schedule um, posts. And so that's what I did for about a year. And I loved it so much. I love to see how the writers get really excited when they get an acceptance letter and know that their work is going to be published. And so that kind of prompted me a couple of years later to start my own literary journal, um, Belle Reeve. And so that was in 2013. Um, it was such a great experience. It was a huge learning curve like everything in this business. Um, but I feel like it's important as a writer not to just have goals for yourself. Um, I believe in tithing your talent. Um, you know, just like we tie in every other aspect of our lives as believers, I feel like when you have something that can help benefit other people, um, it's good to do that. And so this journal has always been sort of my way of uh, tithing in that way. Um, and then I published my book, Fabled, which was huge for me. Lots of learning in that experience as well that I know I'll continue to take take with me in my next experience with Red Ribbons. Um, and then I worked, as you know, as a literary agent, which was a wonderful opportunity, probably like a life-changing thing for me. Um, I met so many wonderful authors and worked with so many amazing people. I just, I feel like that alone is the most um, amazing, rewarding experience. Um, and so, but towards the end of that, working as a literary agent, I feel like God was prompting me to do something different, um, something that would better align with what my goals were. And so that's how the Faithful Creative kind of was born. Perfect. Thank you for sharing all that. That gives us a little bit more background. Okay, so I have wanted to sit down with you because I've been very curious about what inspired you to start the Faithful Creative magazine. Um, so in August of last year, I wrote this blog post called Secular Writers, Your Writing is Your Ministry. And it's, it's one of those things that kind of tackles the myth that in order to be a Christian writer, you have to write overtly Christian books. Um, and so I got a lot of feedback from that post. Um, and a lot of feedback I actually got that were from private messages or emails to me directly, um, just saying that they could relate to it. Um, and so that post alone kind of just sparked this this knowing for me that there's a need in this industry, there's this niche of people who are looking for their voice and looking for how they fit. Um, and so I started really kind of tackling like my own thoughts behind the whole idea of a faithful creative. I had never been tempted.
timid about telling people that I was a believer if they asked and, you know, if, if we got into that conversation. However, I was always very careful not to, like, be overt about it on all of my social media. Um, you know, in this industry, we're kind of taught to be very careful about your marketability. And if you isolate audiences or you make them feel like they don't connect with you in some way, sometimes you can lose a market. Um, and so because of that, I'd always done that. But by August, and when I shared that post, I had been feeling I had been feeling convicted that, you know, all of me is not being shared with these people that I do life with. Because even though we're online, I share with these people and communicate with these people every single day um, through social media. And so I also started thinking, you know, God has given me these stories to write. He's given me the skills to write them. And he's given me the ability um, to write full time. And how thankful am I being if I'm not sharing him in this process and everything that he's doing for me? Um, and so through all of that, my hope with the Faithful Creative and how the magazine kind of kind of just evolved was that it would embolden other writers like me to feel comfortable with being who they are and sharing their faith and not to feel fear. Um, and that to know that there is a community of people just like you who are willing to just, you know, be your tribe in a way um, and help you do this in a, in a very true and meaningful um, career. You know, that's okay. And so that's kind of my hopes. And, you know, the struggles are like everything. It's, a, it's another learning curve. Um, just, just trying to, like, formatting the magazine for me was huge. Like, it took me so much time. Um, and then marketing is a different, a different, you know, struggle. But I feel like um, seeing people now label themselves as faithful creatives, like, that, like, just overwhelms my heart. Because you know, I never would have thought – that I was, I just felt like for so long that that was just me, you know, like it, this was just my story, but it's not. And so it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing to see other people relate. Yes, I totally agree. And I love that you've created this platform where people can actually say these things. And then one of the things I love about the Faithful Creative Magazine is you have um, a variety of topics, you know, you have articles and stories and poems. So any type of creative, my sister um, submitted artwork, any type of faithful creative can submit something and have a shot at having um, their their material in the magazine. And it turned out so beautiful. You did a great job. I, I really appreciate that. But yeah, the, the idea is to just encourage all faithful creatives, you know, um, people with who are creative entrepreneurs, people with other creative businesses, crafters, musicians, artists. I mean, uh, writers are who I'm, I am most in contact with on a daily basis, but this magazine is for everyone. Yeah. I love that. And there is a spot on your website, vanessakeckles.com, where people can click on Faithful Creative Magazine and order a physical copy. Yes, yes. There are e-copies too, is that right? There is. There's a PDF because there's it's image heavy. Um, the PDF works the best. And so, yes, they're available oh, also. Oh, okay. I think... This is such a, a neat idea, too, because um, in my church, we have something called the, the Enzyme, that's for the adults, and then the New Era, it's for the youth. There are different magazines that we can order, The Friend for Children. And so in my family, we've had this habit of receiving these magazines and reading the articles to see what's most up-to-date, people's experiences and, and different yeah. things. And I like this because, you know, it's a wide, general um, Christian audience. And so, you know, I can relate with other, other faiths. Which is really fun for me. I really love that because I feel like we're we're on the same team, you know. Like we're we're trying to bring souls unto Christ. That's what we believe in. And yet, you and I, some of the stories that we're more intrigued in aren't as like cozy. Some of them are almost maybe even a little bit frightening. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I liked what you said one time about how these stories kind of show a, a glimmer of real life. You know, some people have more. I don't know, stronger hardships. And so we can, we can see that, that side of life too, not just the cozier stories. And I think too, like for you and I, we both write or try to write really authentic characters and that is the good and the bad. Uh, and so, you know, we can't like shy away from what makes people who they are um, and their struggles that they have to go through and hopefully come out better on the, on the other side um, in order to make authentic people and characters, we have to show everything. Yeah. Um, and so that makes, you know, our job a little bit more difficult from a faith point of view, but I think it makes it all better for that. I think so. And I think we're both products of the things that we're 
we've been raised on and what we've read. Like, I remember reading your bio before we worked together, um, and I saw that you liked things like Neil Gaiman, I think maybe like Tim Burton and things like that. And those, you know, those aren't overtly Christian things. And so I thought, ooh, maybe I have a chance with her because, you know, I had some agents be like, they've said things like, oh, your stuff's too scary or whatever. And I'm like, I'm just a little, you know, I'm a good girl, you know. <laughs> so you were no, I totally understand, but you know, I think you can appreciate art in all of its forms, you know. And I love, I love looking into into a, a lens from someone else's point of view, which is why I love your book so much, Art So Guillotine, because looking from that point of view, and I know readers will soon know what I'm talking about. Um, it's an interesting and insightful thing. You've done such an excellent job with portraying that character, uh, all of those characters, really. But it's it's like, that's what's so exciting about writing, you know? And that's what's exciting from a reader's point of view. We don't always want to hear everything that is good and, you know, and even good endings. Sometimes life doesn't end exactly what we want or the story doesn't end on a happy note, and that's okay. Um, but, you know, I think that's what, that's what makes writing and reading the ultimate experience kind of editing. Right. And for me, I get really excited about these kind of darker topics. Like, I mean, I grew up on Lost, you know, the show, or I really enjoyed The Mad Men's Daughter by Megan Shepard. Um, I watched Sweeney Todd. And I mean, it's just like, I don't know, some of these creepy things, uh, Anna dressed in blood. And then at the same time, I'm like, but I, I also believe in, in these, um, you know, faith based things that don't always coincide with what we're seeing in, in publishing. And right like you on social media, I would often be like, oh, I want to, you know, share this thought, but I'm going to get attacked, you know, or mm -hmm. if I say I don't believe a certain thing that a lot of people are tweeting about, I'm going to be, you know, unfollowed, yeah. you know, but I really also believe that you should stand for something. And even like I was just recent, recently listening to this podcast from Joy on a Pen and one of the people she interviewed, I think it was just this past week, he was like, when you have media content, you need to stand for something. When you build your platform, it, people won't be interested in you unless you actually stand for something, and that's what you and I are trying to do. Absolutely, I I love that idea too. And and I, I took a freedom class twice last year because I really needed to work through my issues. I'm feeling free to be completely open about you know all that I believe and all that I am. And because that was such a that was just such a hardship for me, I felt like. You know, this is just another act of bravery. The, the magazine, the connecting with other believers who are also writers, but also being okay with the fact that I don't write something that fits perfectly um, on a Christian <laughs> shelf. Um, I'm okay with that because this is the story that I've been given. And also, I kind of feel like when you work with darker subject matters, you are reminded more of the light. And so when there is light in the book, and there is in some way, mm -hmm. um, it stands out and makes that much more of a point, which I feel like is the point. <laughs> I mean, yes. That is the reason why we're writing. So yeah, yeah, I totally get I get that with you. We're we're definitely on the same on the same page there. That's something that I noticed in Fabled when I was reading it, you know, I would see this like dark and twisty world. You had played on several of the different fairy tales and you know, some of the fairy tales get pretty dark. <laughs> yeah. um, but then, you know, your protagonist could be super sweet and showed me how to build strong relationships and then um you know, people you didn't expect kindness from would suddenly extend that kindness and you just write that so well. And so that was one of the first things that I loved about your writing and look forward to seeing more in the future, you know? I appreciate that. <laughs> sure. So you talked about a couple of the obstacles with bringing forward the Faithful Creative Magazine in that, you know, a little bit nervous about sharing more of who you were. Um, were there any other maybe like logistical obstacles that you faced what, when in, in that process? Sure. So I'm still learning. And I think, you know, first of all, I feel like every time you start one project, the first one, the, the third one's always going to be better than the first one. <laughs> I mean, and, and so on and so forth. I feel like it's one of those things that you continue to get better and better at. Yeah. And you continue better ways of working the, and managing your time and managing the product itself. Um, and so, yeah, learning a new program for me was, was difficult. And then, um, I don't know that I'm going to continue staying with the same print source that I have right now, the distributor. And so I, I really love them, but I may go somewhere different. I don't know. I feel like that's an open opportunity and something I'm continuing to look into. Um, and also having an ebook version. That was a huge deal for me because um, with it being heavily, um, it's heavy in photography, 
it was a, it was difficult to, you can't really render that well on like a Kindle, you know, or <laughs> anything like that. And so PDF was sort of my option for this time, but I don't know that, you know, if I learn and continue to, to explore different opportunities and different programs, maybe I can get it to where it's more available and that's something I hope to do in the future. Well, and that's one of the things about entering the industry more, I know you've been in it a while, but like really diving in at this yeah. point in time is, um, it's constantly changing our, you know, software availability and even the audience that we can reach. Like Absolutely. I read that in the next five to 10 years, we should have like five billion more internet viewers because wow. I mean, not everybody across the world has access to streaming the internet yet. And so, I mean, it's like, it's an exciting time because so much is, we're on the cusp of so much and yet we've already been given so much too. The fact that we can, you know, talk when we're states away, that's pretty cool. I know. It's amazing. It is. The internet has, is, is absolutely amazing. And I honestly think that's the, where we are in the world now, um, as far as technology has really opened the door for all that we're doing, especially as independent. Yes. Um, publishers we we would not be able to do this if it weren't for all the different programs out there in the internet and all the technology is is amazing yeah agreed okay <laughs> so i'm wondering about looking to the future what are, what are your some some of your aspirations with the faithful creative magazine um i i thought a lot about this and i try not to get too ahead of myself because i have so much to learn but i would love to see it in christian bookstores like i would love to have it you know major distribution um, that is like ultimate dream for me. Uh, I would love to just reach other people who feel like they don't quite fit in either. Um, but there's, there's this reality that I want everybody to know that there's a community out there of people who are just like them yeah. in the same, in the same boat. And so that's the ultimate dream with the Facebook creative for sure. I love that. I think sometimes when I go into Christian bookstores, sometimes I'll look around and feel like I don't quite belong here, even though I believe everything everybody's saying, you know, pretty much like... I, I just, like, I feel like, but where are my stories are the people who, you know, will go er, a little off with me. So I love that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I do, I do hope also that by bringing this recognition to the fact that there are so many other people yes. out there like us who are writing this, I pray that this is a platform for them so that other publishers will recognize that there's a need not only for readers, but for writers um, to publish books that are, you know, a little bit on the edgy side. I mean, they do do that in some ways, like with Ted Decker or Frank Freddy. Um, but there's just so much more that we could do. There's so many more writers and so definitely so many more readers who are looking for that. Yes, I think it's very common, especially on television and movies, um, for the for people to push the thought that people don't believe in God anymore or even Christ, you know. And, and mm -hmm. in the article that I had submitted in the Faithful Creative Magazine, I had found this statistic that three out of four people still believe in God. So they're cramming this message down our throats that it's not even true that we don't believe in God. Three out of four people still do. And yeah, so right. it's our job to help remind us of that. We're not alone, like you say. Absolutely, absolutely. I love that your article in there also talks about how amazingly um, successful the Christian movies have been and the television shows. I mean, that shows there is an audience. Yeah. So, you know. Thank you. We're your audience. Where are you people? <laughs> <laughs> we need these stories. Okay, so I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about your books and where we can find them. Yeah, um, so Fabled is, um, we mentioned a little bit before, but Fabled's a young adult fantasy, fairy tale, um, loosely based, very loosely based on some Grimm's characters. And it's about this girl who really wanted an epic life until she found herself in a world of nightmare story characters. And then she's like, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, be careful what you wish for kind of thing. Um, and then Red Ribbons is a story about a curious orphan and uh, a witch's curse and forbidden rooms and about how this girl finds her family and herself while helping others. Um, and so it's, it's a middle grade book and both of them will be available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Great. I think that that theme of finding yourself when you're serving others, I mean, that right there, that's a Christian theme. That's how you, yeah. you lose yourself to find yourself, you know, that is, Absolutely. I, love Absolutely. That. I look forward to reading it. <laughs> yes. So, um, is there anything else you would like to mention? About yeah. Anything? So this morning I had, um, in my Bible reading and I don't feel like this is an accident. I read this, this verse that it's Luke 8. 16 and 18, it says, No one lights a lamp and hides it in a jar or puts it under a bed. Instead, he puts it on a stand so that those who come in can see the light. 
Therefore, consider carefully how you listen. And so I kind of want to leave on this thought because this is something that I feel like I've been kind of pondering through this whole experience too, is if we're all truly listening to God's prompting, how would we be going about our creative businesses differently? Um, And how would we be lighting our lamp for the world to see? I love that. I think that that's one of the truths about like, you know, not hiding our candle under a bushel that um, the, I feel like the atonement in Christ allows us to be better than we would be alone. You know, he empowers us to be more because when we take his yoke upon us, then we're able to, you know, do so much more and be more. And I mean, I feel that in my everyday life. If, if I shut him out of my life, then I become weaker. I become more depressed and, you know, I question myself a lot more, but when he's with me, it's like, I can do this, you know, and I think you, you do the same thing, you know, and so there's such a freedom and faith. Um, you know, we're free to be, to be who we are and to write what we write or to, to do our art. Um, because he is the great one who inspires us. And that freedom is, it's, it's more than anything I think that, you know, we could create in ourselves. I mean, that, that is such a divine experience. And for us, um, this is what freedom looks like. Freedom is being bold and being brave and being who we are and writing what we write. So I agree with that. Thank you. I just want to thank you so much for sitting down with me. I you know, love getting to know you and learning from you. For anybody who wants to learn more about Vanessa, please go to her website, vanessakeckles.com. It's a beautiful website. Mine's still a work in progress. I'm like, I need to look at a good website. I'm going to look at Vanessa's. And she, she has her links up there. You can find the Faithful Creative. Um, and then she has a section on her books and very, you know, different options for purchasing which is genius. She has her on the, on the side, there's um, a, a way for you to subscribe to her email list, which would be great. So then you can be in the know for when she'll have these releases and possibly be an advanced reader. Um, and I just, you don't want to, you know, lose track of this girl because she's, she knows what she's doing and she'll treat her readers right. So again, I'm Mary Gray from marygraybooks.com. And I want to thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.